Welcome to the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast. From the bus leagues to the big leagues, the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast has got you covered. Here's Jeff and John. Hey everybody, welcome to the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast. This is episode number 116, and today, Dustin Harris, who has gotten off to a hot start in AAA, is going to be joining us, but before we do that, Jeff, you told me you're going to run a special, but it's a personal one, so tell me what you're going to do there. All right, here's the deal. Since you're watching the podcast, if you haven't subscribed to Rangers Today, and you want to subscribe, which you you should... um, Send me an email, jeff at rangerstoday.com, and I will knock 20% off the regular full season price of 60 bucks. So for $48, you'll get 12 months of Rangers Today. But you got to email me. I'll set up your account, and then we'll go from there. But look, guys, this this thing is is growing. We, we want to build a community. We want you guys who are watching this on YouTube or listening uh, and wherever your favorite podcast outlet is. Join up, all right. Let's let's do this. Let's have conversations. Let's you know comment on my stories, comment on the podcast. Let's let's build yeah. this thing up. Keep building it up. It's doing it's doing real good now. But we want it to be the best, not just the best podcast. We want it to be the best website. We want to be the source for everybody's Rangers and news. So again, Absolutely. email me Jeff at RangersDay.com and we'll set you up. Uh, because we got a lot to talk about. It's been two weeks, and golly, there's been a lot to talk about. And uh, Oh, my uh, gosh. Yeah. And you know what? Hey, guys, also, give Jeff and I a follow on Twitter. Um, I, especially during the games, you'll get updates on Twitter. Uh, you know, Jeff is at Jeff Wilson underscore TXR. I'm it's at on Recliner. the screen right there. Yeah, right below. I'm at Recliner Nerd. Give us a, give us a follow there. Uh, during games, I go to I go to at least one game a series. Jeff goes to all of them that he can. He's going to be on the road some this year. Look, there's only three full-time beat riders for the Texas Rangers, the world champion Texas Rangers, and one of them is my co-host on this right here, and it's fun to watch him work. He's been doing this since 2008. He's a professional journalist, and this is great. This is some great, cheap Texas Rangers stuff right here, guys. Join up. It's really important. Hey, and speaking of, this season is now a couple weeks into it. This team has not played bad. They've had a couple of hiccups. They're seven and five, still in first place. Split the series with the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, split the series with the Astros, which had a couple of mishaps there. But uh, I mean, look, this team looks like a team that's going to hang around, even with an injury. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think, I think we all knew that. You know, there's some still, there's still some things getting sorted out. You know, the, 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 the pitching staff is. Is not firing on all cylinders. I think it's safe to say. Uh, I, know, I know a lot of people are going to be uh, immediately mindful of Jose Leclerc, who has not had a good start to the season. Uh, he, John, you were there the other night when when he when he lost the lead in the in the ninth, and um, you know David Robertson gave up a home run in the seventh. What do we do? We go into the clubhouse, and who are the two guys just waiting for us? David Robertson and Jose Leclerc. They are accountable. They know they made mistakes. They got to be better. Uh, but you know, b- before everybody goes and and starts, you know, demanding the Rangers trade for a closer or, or you know get Leclerc out of the role, you know, it's it's early in the season. All right, well, uh, it, it it's real early, and this is when pitchers are probably their most susceptible. You know, and well, and still still coming out of spring training, probably not where they want to be. Uh, some of them are, some of them aren't, and it's it's not a Rangers only problem. You know, you look around baseball, and there are there are closers who are blowing games left and right the the, the main, the main one Hayden is David Hayden. Bednar who a lot of people who, are, who have listened to this podcast have wanted the Rangers to trade for he's blowing three of them and the Pirates are a good team so uh it's not just him uh, or, or Leclerc it's 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 a lot of guys Hayden? I mean Josh Josh Hader lost the game you know he came into a tie game in the ninth against the Yankees and gave up a run and he was the other guy that the Rangers uh, that fans <laughs> wanted the Rangers to get so it's not just a Jose Leclerc problem. I know that there's still a whiplash from from last year's terrible bullpen. Uh, Josh Spores is injured right now, so that's that's kind of a you know a, a hurt, hurting the, the back end. But you have David Robertson, a, a, a terrific veteran. Kirby Yates has been really good, and Jose Leclerc's gonna be fine. Yeah, you just well, you know you just keep in mind 162 games, and we're in game 12. Okay. If this were an NFL schedule, seventeen game schedule, twelve games is the equivalent of like early in the fourth quarter. So the Rangers yeah. are basically in the fourth quarter of their first game of an NFL season. 
Exactly. So got- and I've, I said this about Jose Leclerc, and look, believe me, I, I understand that, that he's already blown a save. He's already given up some runs, and, and there's some issues. But look at the rest of what he's done. He struck out two of the three batters in the ninth inning that he gave up the home run, and he walked the guy. The yeah. guy's got stuff that gets people out. Right. I mean, he when it's going, he yeah. sat there and said, I was – I was trying to put the ball up and out. That's what he was calling for, up and out. I brought it across the middle of the plate in, up high, and that guy already had two home runs. He goes, I missed, and I missed yeah. bad, and he yeah. took advantage of it. Yeah, And, and, <laughs> and you it know, didn't help that he walked. But he sat there and took it, and he told yeah. us. Well, to you know, and, and and Evaldi took it for hanging hanging the, the pitch he hung to Shea Langoliers who had the three home runs. I mean, it's – This was it's, a splitter, right? It, it's – it's uh, it, you know these guys make mistakes, and and it's going to happen. And you just gotta gotta keep that in mind. The big picture: 162 games. So anyway, but one guy who's not missing is Cody Bradford. Oh my uh, gosh! You know, I we I'm I'm at the ballpark today uh, as we as we shoot this, and um, we just talked to Bruce Bochy not long ago before the game, like we do every day. And Bruce Bochy, I've got the quote right here, um, said. Kind of, kind of like you know, Cody. After the start last night, said, "I just want to help the team win." You know, if that means when the the big dogs are healthy, I've got to go to the bullpen. Great. And uh, he was asked, "Is Cody Bradford a big dog, or can he be a big dog?" And he and Bruce said, "Well, he is right now." You know, he gets John, and he said, "You throw like that, you're not going to go anywhere." So right now, you know, because Michael Lorenzen is is in the clubhouse today. He had a rehab start yesterday. And first, and uh, Round Rock, he's ready to go to be dropped into the rotation. And the thought is, well, somebody's got to somebody's got to go. It won't happen immediately because the Rangers are in this long stretch of consecutive games. They want exactly. to give starters an extra extra rest by putting in a basically going to a six man rotation for a week or two. Once that's over with, Cody Bradford yeah, Cody. is not going to get out of the rotation. You know, no. he's not going to the bullpen. So you you need to watch John Gray. Um, and, and Andrew Heaney. And, and and really, you probably should watch, watch Lorenzen, who's pitched out of the bullpen before. Um, and he has know, it's, not it's, just blown away AAA hitters. Well, you know, he, he, he's working on stuff. His first know, three innings were good yesterday. Um, his start, his second start was good. I guess the first three innings were good yesterday. I wonder about the ABS. He had five walks. I, I wonder about the automatic balls and strikes. Uh, pitchers don't like it. I think hitters really do. So, um, anyway, something something will be happening at the end of this month. But it looks like Cody Bradford, as long as he his arm doesn't fall off, is going to stay in the rotation, and he should. He's earned it. No, you, you can't argue with it. Right now, he's got 19 innings in three starts. I mean, this is a guy that's not going five innings. This yeah. is a guy that's going at least six every start. I mean, wow. Just amazing. I mean, look, you, you can't do anything but take your hat off to him. Well, it, it, it goes to show you that if you can command your pitches and change speeds, that you're going to have success. He hits his spots. His fastball has just a little late movement that always seems to miss the barrel. Um, I mean, the look at the, the pitching coach's brother. Won 355 yes. games, I think, in the major leagues. And he never threw above 95. You know, he, he was in the low low 90s, but he commanded the shit out of everything, and he changed speeds. I mean, that's, exactly. that's the key to it. And even guys who throw filthy 100-mile-per-hour fastballs, if they have it a devastating move. slider and changeup, they're going to be unhittable. So um, exactly. good for good for Cody, uh, good for the Rangers. You know, I mean, at a time when the rotation is a question mark, and a lot of people, I think, had him as the number one question mark entering the season, well – you got some other questions out because Cody Bradford's not not a problem. And, and let me tell you what you're seeing with Cody Bradford. You're seeing a guy that if he goes out and maybe he doesn't have it, is a guy that's still likely to go five innings, maybe give up three runs, something like that. He seems like a guy that's not going to get shell shocked if somebody starts, you know, getting after him and at least eat a few innings for you on a day that you don't have it all together. He just seems like that guy. That's what good pitchers do in the major leagues. There are going to be days where it's not going. Something's not biting or whatever. You adjust. You do things. Maybe you give up a few runs, but you stay in and you try to help your bullpen out and you try to stay in for at least five innings or four or five innings and you go as long as you can. That's what good starting pitching does because nobody's going to go all season and not at least have a game where it's just 
everybody's teeing off on you or you're tipping yeah. your pitches or something's happening. Yeah, <laughs> and, and for a for a rookie, he's very professional. He goes Absolutely. about his business. He prepares. He he seems unflappable on the mound, and that's that's something that they noticed right away about him. The Rangers noticed right away about him last year. So, um, again, good for him. Um, and you we know, saw and, his and dad. It, you saw his dad too. Yeah. Yeah, I saw Randy and uh, Randy Bradford, big fan of the show, yeah. and rangerstoday.com, which you can subscribe to for five nine 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 a month or $60 for a or year. Or if you send me an email. Email and get it cheaper. Jeff Wilson at <laughs> Jeff, rather, at Ran- Jeff at rangerstoday.com. I'll get you I'll get you a deal for 48 So, anyway, uh, yeah, Randy Bradford, and he was uh, he was playing host to Stan Wenzel. Uh, Davis's dad, Davis, made his debut the other night, so... Had a, chance to meet, had a chance to meet both of them, uh, Cody and and, and Davis are, are wonderful friends. And uh, uh, Tuesday night after the debut, they were actually on the field together, taking photos together. Um, you know, big deal for – they lived together in spring training. They knew each other in college, obviously, at Baylor. Uh, uh, fun, in college. A fun story, fun story. Um, but, yeah, Davis is up. Justin Foskey is on the injured list with an oblique injury. He hurt it yeah, the swing before he got his first career hit. Um, you know, it's uh, – uh, too bad, but but it's great for Davis to finally have his opportunity. He was part of the the really the very good 2019 draft class, as it turned out. Josh Young uh, was the first pick, eighth overall. Davis was the Rangers' second pick at at 41st overall. Cody Bradford was in the sixth round. Our buddy Blaine Krim was drafted later in the draft. I know I'm leaving guys out. I apologize, but uh, this is a it's it's fun to to see these things come to fruition finally. And Davis has had a long road with injuries. Uh, yeah, he didn't get invited to big league camp in 2023, which I think stung him a little bit. He comes out, he hits 30 home runs, leads the Pacific coast league or is tied for the lead. Uh, he wants to be better. He knows he can hit for a little bit better average. He had a great spring fun back in big league spring training, wanted to make an impression on Bruce Bochy. And he obviously did. The guy can play great defense at third base, but he can play shortstop. He can play second. He can probably play first in a pinch. He was a catcher in high school. So, I mean, he, I think he could do a lot. So, well, his at bats uh, the other night were good at bats, too. He didn't they were. Play, you know, they were, yeah. And kids he, come up and just start swinging at the first pitch. I mean, you're so amped up. You're making your major league debut. He put, yeah. the, he put the barrel on the ball three sure. times pretty yeah. well. Well, it looks like against – and against, you know, he when the, when the Rangers are facing a left-hander, as they did Tuesday, as they're doing today, um, I don't know if they will in Houston or not. Uh, <laughs> they're going to face some lefties here. And uh, the way it is set up right now, uh, Bruce Bochy wants to have uh, Josh Smith and uh, wow. uh, Jared Walsh against right-handers, and then against lefties, put Duran at, at first, as he's done today, and, and Wenzel at, at third, and try to give him the best chance. Josh Smith has been great. Oh my and gosh! Which, you know, today is the today is his first the first time he hasn't started since uh, the Josh Young injury, and um, I know it. Hard to believe it. It's only a week and a day ago, but uh, or I guess a week and two or three days ago. But um, it's still pretty fresh that Josh Young injury. He's supposed to get the cast off and the stitches off tomorrow, uh, but he's he's still going to be eight weeks away. Uh, but Josh Smith has given the team a real nice lift. Uh, oh my gosh! You know, and and, and it, it goes to show when when major league players, the bench players, get regular at bats, you see how good they are. You know, and, and, yeah. and, um, and it, it's, you know, you see what Jer- Jared Walsh has done. He's been really good. Um, you know, and this, so this is going to be the arrangement for probably another week or so. Nathan, Nathaniel Lowe is going to go on a rehab assignment to, beginning tomorrow with Frisco. Uh, he's going to be built up gradually, kind of like a spring training, a little bit faster than that. But uh, it, it's not going to be a Corey Seager situation, I don't think, where, where Nate Lowe uh, sees sees you know two at bats one day one the next and then says it says he's good I, I think uh, uh, the the Rangers are going to give him some time this is an oblique injury you don't want to mess with those you want to make sure everything's fine so far so good uh, from what from what Nate has said uh, took live batting practice the past two days uh, went out ran the bases yesterday. Uh, that's always kind of the last thing you do before you go on a rehab assignment. So, um, when does this rehab start? He's going to start it tomorrow at Frisco. So get out don't, to Frisco, uh, guys. Yeah, go out to Frisco if you can't make it down to Houston. Uh, Round Rock uh, is at home as well. well. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, 
Uh, so, so he's trending the right way. And and when he gets back, what are you going to do? You know, Jared Walsh is he's a veteran bad. He's he's been productive. Uh, he can't but be sent down. but if man, but if third base, I mean, Nate Lowe's going to play first base every day. Jared Walsh right. doesn't play anything else. Uh, the DH. You know, uh, I, I I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be a, a, a quandary because you have Wenzel now who can be optioned. Duran and Smith can be optioned. Sure. Um, you know, I, I don't know how they're going to make that happen. But but having one guy only to play first base is going to be a big deal. Um, but I'd imagine that 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 Nathaniel will get some days at DH and you know sure. maybe a couple of days off early on. So we'll see. But they're you know the Lorenzen thing's a decision. What to do with Jared Walsh, Wenzel, uh, Duran is a decision too. So uh, things are things are afoot. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we could have a pretty newsy show next week. Absolutely, and let me tell you what: this is the reason this team is a contender this year. Is they have got the depth at the upper level where they are sticking. Look, I know the staff, the pitching staff's got stuff that's coming, but it's not going to be here for another sixty days at least, or you know. I think Scherzer's a little quicker. He, we might see him in a month. Um, yeah. Have you talked to him at all? Yeah, I talked to him. Um, he's going to be back in, I don't know, I would say five weeks. He he he's going to throw. He's going to start traveling with the team, so he's going to throw live batting practice at some point on the upcoming uh, ten game three city road trip. Um, and then he he says that once he throws live batting practice uh, in spring training, he's ready for a game. So um, you know. I don't know if they'll knock out his first couple here in sim games, um, which would make some sense. Sure. Uh, I think that that you know if you're going to send the guy out to an affiliate, at least make it worth his while. <laughs> you know, let him let him pitch three or four innings or four or five innings, whatever. Um, but sure, he, know, he knows his body better than anybody I've been around. He knows his stuff. He's yep. going to know when he's ready, and when he is, I mean, he's in great spirits. I think he's oh, man. he's ready to. I think he's ready to get out there and 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 go. Well, look, good things happening with the the former uh, with the current World Series champs. They certainly look good. Other teams around the league, there's a couple of them. I, the Yankees are doing better than I thought they would this year. That's yeah. me personally. I don't like the Yankees, but. Uh, the Astros, look, I'm the guy that this is early in the season, so we got to tap the brakes on that. They're struggling a little bit. But I also said I thought it was going to be a two-race horse between the Rangers and Seattle and that Astros would be a wild-card team. That's kind of looking like that could be something. But the Astros are a team also that can get hot and go. Yeah, the Astros can't score. They can pitch, so that, that helps. <clears throat> that helps cover a lot of blemishes, but they don't score a lot of runs. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the Astros. Um, their bullpen hasn't been as good as they were probably thinking. Um, you know, they have the Framber Valdez thing, which there still hasn't been a, a definitive answer. He's on the 15-day IL. He could be transferred if it's worse, but um, you haven't heard a lot of news about that. Uh, wow. So it, it, they're, they're, they're a different team. You know, they have a different manager. Uh, we talked about this last week. You know, a new manager, not that they're reinventing the wheel there, but there's probably some subtle differences, you know, that just, they, they, they looked fine. I mean, I, you know, they looked like they did last year. That lineup is, you know, Jordan Alvarez, my God, uh, what a, what a beast he is. Uh, He's my sports take, you know, you you hate the sports team that he just kills the Rangers Uh, and, and, and does it without flash or flare. He just goes up. And if you put a pitch in the right spot, he does, he punishes it. Right, right. He's he's a great hitter. I mean, it's, that's just the bottom line. And the home run you know, hit the other night, landed. I, good God! Yeah, man. It, they said it was four thirty. I I don't believe that. I mean, it was, it was a I post. swear to God, it looked like it almost hit that upper deck. I yeah. mean, where it landed. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. No, so yeah, the Rangers are headed there first uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday uh, night game, mid afternoon, afternoon. Uh, I'm gonna go down there. Um, Short, short, cheap trip, and then uh, they'll go to Detroit night game, three day games. You know, Detroit early in the season plays a lot of day games because of the potential for bad weather. They got rained out today already. So, uh, and then and then it's off to Atlanta. So a big, a big, big early season matchup of World Series uh, uh, contenders. Couple, yeah. um, so that'll be that'll be a fun series too. Um, so stick with Rangers today, stick with our podcast, uh, subscribe, subscribe to the podcast, 
subscribe to Rangers today and uh, subscribe uh, to the YouTube again. channel. Yeah, right. So um, one one other thing that, that happened right before we started, <clears throat> this is pretty funny. Jordan Montgomery has fired Scott Boris. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Scott Boris is no longer representing Jordan Montgomery. So read into that what you will. I think you can read a lot into that one. Um, you know, it, it, it's interesting because, you know, with, with both Blake Snell and and Jordan Montgomery, they were with other agencies as recently as two years ago, two or three years ago. And, and Boris came and poached them or lured them away, I'm sure, with promises of fortunes and, sure. and 72 virgins and all yeah. kinds of things. Uh, <laughs> so it, it, it didn't work out. I don't know, you know, that this might tell you where Jordan Montgomery's head's at. No, you I'll know. tell you right now. Look at Jordan Montgomery and the contract he signed uh, there. The Rangers probably do that if that was earlier, um, and they yeah, didn't already yeah. go. That out. happens like the first month, the first month of free agency. Sure. Yeah. Well, but, even, but I mean that that wasn't that deal wasn't there, and I no. just wonder. You, you wonder what was turned down. Yep. I wonder if Lorenz. I mean, you know, Lorenz, and before they signed Lorenz, and after they signed Lorenz, and it was obvious they weren't going to go get Jordan Montgomery. But before they signed Lorenz, and I'm just wondering if Montgomery wasn't saying to to Boris, "Look, give me something even shorter deal. I want to go back to Texas. I liked it there. Try to do it. You know, Texas was putting something on the table because they wanted him back, but they weren't going to commit to five years. They weren't going to commit to four years. They, they just they don't do that normally." And they well, were and I mean, they they do have a luxury tax threshold. There's the TV uncertainty, exactly. Which I, I don't buy that 100. percent I buy the luxury tax thing more, um, you know, because because if you go over this this next threshold, the penalty steeper, but also it it, it kind of puts you into territory. You start losing draft picks, and, and absolutely. And so I mean, there's just a lot going on, but it just just very interesting that 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 they have cut ties and uh, George Montgomery is now represented by the Wasserman group. Um, but um, pretty, well, pretty I, I don't know. I, I don't want to chuckle, but it's kind of funny. Well, yeah, I've always said this. I, I, I think Boris really does some things that are wrong. I, I had that. If I had a kid that was one of the top prospects in all of baseball, I really want Boris to negotiate. He does get the money in a lot of circumstances, but I, I do, I do have to chuckle at that. That's funny. Look, let's go. We got to get Dustin in here. Let's yeah. get Dustin going right now. Then we're going to go down in the bus leagues guys. We're going seasons in full swing. We're at it. Dustin Harris coming up right after this. The guest segment on the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast is brought to you by the Round Rock Express, the AAA affiliate of the world champion Texas Rangers. They are home right now. Uh, They are home through Sunday the 14th against Oklahoma City. Uh, Tonight, if you're able to hear this and and get out, it's Austin Black Senators night. Fireworks Friday tomorrow. A short sleeve hoodie giveaway, which is pretty sharp looking. I don't know if you've seen it on, on the social medias. That's Saturday. And then, and then on Sunday, it's Milker's Day, so I'm looking forward to some cows being milked. Then they hit the road for a week, as is the case in the minor leagues. Round Rock Express return home September, or September, April 23rd against Salt Lake City for six games. So go out, check out the Express. It's good baseball. It's a loaded team. Uh, go to MILB.com slash round hyphen rock for more information. All right, guys, and joining us right now on the Round Rock Express Hotline, our sponsor, like Jeff just said, it's Texas Ranger outfielder, first baseman. I don't know what you want to call base. it. Huh? Third first base. Huh? Third base now. Do that. It's Dustin Harris. Dustin, what's going on, man? Uh, not much. Just uh, watching some of the Masters right now, hanging out. About to oh, end the field here shortly. Who's got the early lead? Um, Who is it? Is it? Uh, I don't even know. Can not tell you? All right, now they were rain delayed. Kind of like you, you, you. I think the rain that you guys got the other night is is now it, it, now, it now moved east and, and yeah, swamp swamp Augusta <laughs> National. Um, yeah, you guys had a double header yesterday. Had it, <laughs> you you worn out? Yeah, we had a uh, we had two seven since we got rained out Tuesday, so uh, we were able to take both of those from OKC. Yeah, that, you know. I was talking to one of the guys from Round Rock during spring training, and uh, he was like, 
it's going to be us, Oklahoma City, and Reno. Yeah, you know, for for the championship. How how good? I mean, your team, you included, is really good. Yeah, that uh, our lineup. I think I think it's pretty scary. One through nine, it's just it's it doesn't matter who's up there. It's just going to be a tough at bat, and it's going to be allowed out for sure. Yeah, and and uh, the 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 pitching side. Uh, you know, you know the guys that you've known them for years now, with, with Owen and and, and Jack, and uh, just a bunch of good arms. Um, do you guys? I mean, when you you're on this team, I know what the goal is. I know the goal is to be on the the, the team that I'm about to watch play today. But a championship would be pretty nice, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, no kidding. I mean, like you said, the staff is staff is just as scary. I mean. It doesn't matter who we're rolling out there from the bullpen, the starters. It's those guys. Those guys are good, and this team's this team's legit. All right, so you were in big league spring training again. You're on the 40 man roster, so of course you were there. But, but you got hurt. You, you had a little oblique issue. We didn't see a lot of you. Um, how are you doing now? It looks like everything's okay. Good. I'm feeling feeling good. Feel healthy. In spring, I uh, I just kind of dove and. I think it was more bruising than anything. It was just okay. my oblique was just real sore for a little while, but now I feel good and feel feel real good. Seems it seems like if if a position player is getting hurt these days, it seems like it's an oblique injury. Yeah, that's what that's I I feel like it wasn't really that common, and now this year it's just I don't know more than more than I've seen in the past. But you know, I I have a theory, and and. It's it's relevant because you know the players' association is complaining about the pitch clock having an effect on the on the pitchers' injuries. Tell me the truth: if you've taken a big swing and you've got to stay in the box and swing again ten seconds later or fifteen seconds later, do you have a chance to recover? Do you need a chance to recover? Uh, you know what? I don't. For me, I don't think I don't think I need that chance to recover after a big swing or something, but. Uh-huh. I could see where you're coming from for other guys, for sure. I mean, there are guys who swing swing the bat like yeah so tomorrow. <laughs> like <crazy. laughs> I mean, they get their whole body into it. It just yeah, seems no like kidding. it just seems like hey, I don't know. Maybe it's something to maybe if MLB was concerned about uh, position players too, they'd push back the pitch clock. But anyway, um, so what's working for you right now? I mean, you're off to a good start. You're you're hitting three thirty three uh, after uh, three home runs, basically two weeks. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like I'm on time for doesn't matter what pitch is coming. I feel like I'm on time and just uh, not not really chasing out of my zone too much and just uh, putting good at bats together and just trying to hand it to the next guy. So guys, guys are always tinkering with their swings. Did you did you make any any adjustments from last season to this season during the off season? Um, not subconsciously. I mean, maybe I did, but uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not but, saying you uh, needed to. I'm just wondering if if there was something that the Rangers wanted you to work on or anything like that. Yeah, no. For me, I feel like it's just like I said, timing. Mm-hmm. I just think I'm on time for pitches. And last year, I feel like I may have been n- not necessarily on time. First pitch of the bat, fouled one off, getting a bad count, and then you know how it goes from there. Just sure. Yeah. So. They, you're, you've been playing a lot of third base. I know you've done it before. Yeah, you just haven't done it in a while. Is it like riding a bike again, or is it a little, little more to it than that? You know what? I played, a, I played one game in spring at third. Okay, and uh, on one of the backfields, and I thought it was going to be a little more awkward than what it was. I got out there and I felt comfortable, and I mean, it's kind of been like riding a bike. I feel like. Yeah. Wait. What? What? what I mean, the ball gets on you quick. So, what are the challenges at third base? Um, I think for me right now, it's just that internal clock that I've haven't played in a couple years. So just knowing the runner, knowing how quick I need to get rid of it, just stuff like that. Okay, all right, good. Um, which one do you prefer? What, what, do, what? If if you got to choose what position you played, what would it be? <laughs> That's one of the questions from a fan. Oh, oh well, let's save it then. Okay, think about it. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll think about that one. All right. Uh, one of your three home runs is an inside the park home run. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> that How was, was that? No, that was real fun. When's the last time you had an inside the park home run? 
I think I had one uh, in Double A two years ago. Okay, or maybe was last a, year. Two years ago, last year. Was it a was it a funky play? Did did it was uh, it was real similar to that one. I mean, just yeah. kind of right center and kicked off the fence a little bit. And <laughs> let let me state unequivocally: of all the home runs I hit my entire career from T ball up, only one wasn't an inside the park home run. <laughs> hey, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, so. I, I think that's a pretty underappreciated part of your game is how fast you are because you have four stolen bases. Um, what's what's your background in running? Did did you run track in high school? Because uh, you're a big guy too. It's not like you're little. Yeah, I mean, I feel like when I was young, I was somewhat you could say fast, and then once I got to high school, kind of leveled out. And even now, I wouldn't say I'm a burner. I just think more so I'm kind of a good base runner and. Mm-hmm. Just good base runner go. fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like, uh, right, the, the, the guy with the most steals in Rangers history is, is Elvis Andrus, who was was somewhat fast, but he, he was never the fastest guy in the league. Ian Kinsler is who is second. And again, he was a great base runner. You know, he, he knew when to, when to run, when not to run. He would get good jumps. Um, is is that is that what you work on? You work on like the, the pitcher's time to the mound? You, you, you got you to gotta be smart. Yeah, that's one of the big things I do. I just look for look for a small movement he might do or something. Like in the dugout, I'm watching to see if maybe his toe comes up early, his shoulder goes down, just something small that I can key in on and just try to try to get a, a good focal point to when to take off. Do you have the green light? Is that is that the philosophy of the Doug Davis that uh, most of the time I do? Run? Yeah, most of the time, yeah. Okay. Um, so we, we a couple guys have been called up here in the first two weeks of the season. Um, Sam Huff's hitting great. He's been here before. You're on the 40. Are you are you is it hard to not look ahead for you? Or are you stay stay where your feet are? I mean, I'm it's I kind of just try to like to stay where my feet are, but uh, yeah. like it's it's tough to do sometimes. Your your mind wanders and just you get to thinking, but yeah, I'm just trying to stay where my feet are and just uh, continue to play my game and put together good at bats, play some defense and help this team win. Yeah. Look, I'm not trying to predict what's happening here, but all of a sudden you're playing some third base. Um, I'm I'm just saying, keep, keep doing what you're doing. Um, They're obviously wanting to move you to some positions when you're hitting, they want to find a place to put you. That's the way that, that this works at every level. So uh, I, I find that intriguing. You're over at third, which you haven't played in a while, but now you're starting to play some more. And it could be all coincidence. They just want to get you on the field because you can't play outfield too. But for me, I'm like, oh, okay, because you you started out hot here. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think it's good just to show some versatility, just to show that I can play defense if it's infield, outfield, and just try to find a spot in that stack lineup over there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you – what did you see? I mean, you, you watched this team last year. You were part of the stay ready group, right? For the, during the playoffs. Correct. What did, how, what did you see from that, t- the, this team last year? What the, the run they got on? I mean, it was, it was, it was fun to watch. I mean, I don't think many, many, uh, outside people thought that they were going to go as far as they did. And just throughout the year, they just kept proving people wrong and just, a lot of uh, a lot of real professionals on that team, and they uh, go about their business the right way, and it's it's really cool. And I know I know you know you know who's in the outfield. I have to tell you, and who who, who <laughs> plays where. But what's it like to be in an organization like this year? Well, this time last year they hadn't won the World Series, and now they have. Does it make a difference in your mind? Like, hey, I'm <laughs> I'm in a team that won the World Series. <laughs> um, for me, I mean. Yeah, it's cool. I think it's uh, it sets a standard now. I mean, now that they won a World Series last year, I think we want to try to or try to repeat it. And uh, it starts from the top and works all the way all the way down to the bottom. All right, all right. Hey, John said he had some fan questions, so let's do it. Let's yeah, go. a couple real quick before we get into that, and and uh, I'll have uh, Joel bring those up in just a second because I don't have them at my disposal. I sent them to him. <laughs> um, so. Oh, here we go. Okay. We'll go to the first one. Bob, what position <laughs> on the field are you most comfortable with? There you go. Go ahead and answer that one. Um, I would say 
still probably probably third third base still. I mean, I played infield up until two years ago. Yeah, that was my I was primarily a second baseman, and then went to third base for college. And then, uh, so I mean, still in the dirt probably is more comfortable, but outfields like second nature at this point as well. You know, I, re- I remember the first time you were on, you you said in high school you never hit a home run. You were a little skinny guy. <laughs> it's funny yeah. you remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember a lot of things, all right? It's, it's, it's a blessing yes, and a he curse. he does. He's like a wife. <laughs> but, hey, easy. But, yeah, you know, that, that, that's good. That's good. I mean, if, it's, if it feels like an old pair of slippers, perfect. All right, next. Next question. Is there a difference at AAA level compared to the AA level? That's Brian Sweet. Um, for me, the biggest thing I think would just be consistency. I think probably a little more consistent in the AAA level, and then uh, also that the strikes on the ABS. Yeah, that's that's a that would say a major difference. Travel is uh, probably a little easier. Are you, no, are you travel? Are you for it or against it? The ABS. I think it's great. I like the I like the challenge system. I think that should be up there for sure. Have you ever Have you ever won a challenge? Yeah, I've won a, a handful. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I I, uh, I don't know how I feel about it. I think well, and I think I think it also I think the pitchers hate it and the hitters like it. Yeah, that's yeah. the way. <laughs> I mean, I think I think the uh, the challenge system, I'm all for that, but I don't think all the pitches need to be ABS because then that's just the strike zone will feel tiny. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. yeah. Look, in in like tennis, hell, I don't know if you watch a lot of pro tennis. I don't, I don't, but. Pro tennis has had a challenge system in place for a long time, like on serves or you know line calls. Why can't the major leagues do that? Just just give a team, give a batter one challenge a game. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I don't know. Figure out a system because the technology is there, yeah. and you want to get everything right. So just do it. I, I, Maybe I, it's a deciding pitch. Maybe if it's a ball four or a strike three, and someone thinks it wasn't that, maybe only you can only challenge that. Yeah, something uh, like that. But yeah, but like, something. But like you, yeah. you know, if you get a if you get a crap call against you in the in a first pitch of the bat, it changes everything. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 0-1 and one is completely different counts. It is. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. But you'd All have right. to be sparing with it. You're right. You can't stop every every can't stop yeah. three times. And a bat, and go, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> but, it, but it's pretty quick, though, right? I mean, it's no, yeah. I mean, if it's if it's right, it only takes about twenty seconds, maybe, and then back in the box. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Angel Hernandez would cause a game to go <laughs> four hours and eighty-five minutes, or, and I'm, I can't even do math because I have four eighty-five. That'd be five twenty-five. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, you're the math wizard. Okay, last one. How did he handle the news about being traded to Texas? What is his approach being in the farm system for a team? Nearly every position is on lockdown for multiple years. Yeah, that's two questions there, but that's a good one. That's BC Trading Cards, Texas. Okay, I mean, yeah, when I got traded over here, uh, I wasn't really expecting it. Like, it was during that COVID stuff. Like, it was, mm-hmm. I played 50 games with the A's, and uh, I I heard the news. I mean, I was kind of in kind of in shock. Didn't really – didn't have an agent at the time, so I kind of had to find out on my own. And then uh, – just when I came over to Texas after it, it was a while, I didn't get to meet anybody just because I was back home training. Right. And then when I got over here, it was uh we had a we had a little hitters camp in Down East. I went over there, met a few of the guys, met some of the staff, and then once I got to spring training, it was it was kind of like kind of like home. I mean, it felt everybody welcomed me, with open arms, and it's been good. And then I guess you can only control you can control on the the other question, right? Yeah, on the other end, I mean, like I said, I just kind of want to show some versatility, show that I'm a baseball player, and just that, just try to hey, find a way on that team. I don't care what anyone says. If you're hitting, you're hitting. You will find a place to play in the in the major leagues, whether it's here or not. Uh, mm-hmm. You're going to be valuable to somebody if you continue to play and play well. Um, that, that's just the way this this thing works. It's always worked that way. Hey, let me ask you this. You know, well, before we get you out of here, um, travel's different now. But you know, we when we first had you on, we we talked a lot about where you grew up, play any other sports, all that stuff. Favorite fast food. We kind of did that stuff. Now let's do something about now that you're here. You know what what. Um, 
when y'all travel, by, whether it was by bus or now it's by plane, what are you usually doing on the tra- uh, on the on the trip? Are you watching movies? Are you guys playing cards? What are you doing? Uh, I'm I'm lucky enough where I'm able to catch up on some sleep. I uh, once we get in the air on the planes, I'm able to able to knock out and get some C's, catch up on some catch up on some sleep. Yeah, it's a it's a skill that I, I have. don't have it. I can <laughs> I can fall asleep before the plane takes off. It's I, don't yeah, that's, I think it's the like the hum of the engine. I can I can be knocked out. Like they have to wake me up if I'm in the emergency row and I have to say yes, I'm I'm okay. <laughs> I mean I I can sleep on a plane. That's like my one skill in life. What about a what about a bus? Did you sleep on the bus too? Uh the bus is a little more difficult just because the seats are I don't I don't know. I don't like the seats on the buses. So I'll uh, I'll try to get a pillow, prop it up on the window or something, and then uh, but I'll throw some headphones on, listen to some music, or just try to play some cards or something to keep me busy. Hey, so so you're on the forty man roster. Does does the rule where you where forty man guys fly first class is that applicable, or do you guys not fly enough for planes with first class? <laughs> you fly a lot um, of Southwest. No, I don't. I don't think that's applicable. Apl- oh, whatever applicable here. Applicable, yeah. But uh, I mean, we just we've been sitting on the on the other seats. I mean, no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask you this: So you grew up? Well, you grew up in Florida, right? Correct. Yeah. So, who was your team growing up, or your favorite player growing up? Okay, so uh, I was a big Boston Red Sox fan growing up. My dad's from Boston, and okay. uh, so I was. I always liked. Uh, I had two favorite hitters. I had Ichiro. I liked him a lot, and yeah. then I also liked watching David Ortiz. Okay. Now, did you ever that... get a chance to go see him play as you were a kid? Did you ever get to a big league game? Uh, I went to I went to Fenway and uh, summer ball one year when I was in uh, college. Okay. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Cool. That's cool. Well, yeah, that I think, sweet. hey, you know, Dustin, we appreciate you coming on here. Jeff, you got anything else for us? I do have one more thing for you. Okay. How is your brother doing? I know he got drafted last year out of Oklahoma. What's he? What's Correct. he? Correct. Yeah, he's uh, he's with high with the Cardinals right now. Okay. Uh, he sent me a picture the other day. There was some snow on the field, so that looked <laughs> <laughs> that did not look fun. But where, uh, where's their affiliate? Uh, he's in Peoria. Oh, Peoria, Illinois. Okay. Correct. Yes. Hey, I've been to that stadium. I think I'm the times. Chiefs. At least they yep, used to be the, the Chiefs. Chiefs. Peoria right. Chiefs. Yeah. I've been there. I've I've been there. My my in laws live about uh, thirty miles from there. Oh, that's okay. great. Two two yeah. two brothers in professional baseball, man. That's yeah, no, he said he uh he had a good spring. He's uh excited for the season. I'm excited to follow him throughout his career. Did your now did you, did your parents come see you or did they go see him or I mean, because because I mean, it's not far from from where I'm guessing your family lives, where the Cardinals train. Um, yeah, they were able to go out to his uh, spring training. Uh, I think for a weekend, spend some time with him. They went to the beach and had a good time over there. And they left you uh, left you to your own <laughs> devices in, in Arizona. Yep, and I was out in Arizona. Just... Yeah, Dust, Dustin's on the forty man. He's good. Yeah, he he's, got it. he's good. He he take right. care of himself. Yeah. They'll probably head out to Round Rock at some point. I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to try to try to make their way out of Texas this year. Good, absolutely. Good deal. All right, all right, man. Uh, Jeff, is that it? That's it for me. I mean, we uh, we 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 appreciate you coming on. This is your third time. You're you're part of the three timer group, so yeah, we appreciate we the heck out of that. And uh, hey, the always, other three timers in stuff the big leagues. Good yeah, next know. next time, uh, yeah, maybe let's make that bet. Next time, major leagues. Let's go. That, let's do that, it. That, all right. Be, uh, Guys, that's right. Dustin Harris. Dustin, thank you so much for stopping down to talk to us. We'll catch you. Uh, we're coming down to Round Rock. You know, if it, if it all works out the way you hope it does, we won't see you because maybe you'll already be back up here and we'll do <laughs> that way. One way or the other, we're going to probably see you here in the next month or so, um, and hopefully it's up here, but we really appreciate you taking your time. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Good talking to you. All right. All right, guys, that's Masters. Dustin Harris. We're going to go down in the bus leagues right after this. All right, and big thanks to Dustin Harris for joining us. Uh, Jeff, it is time now to go down in the bus leagues. First of all, we got to talk about each league and what's going on, and we can talk to about each level 
Uh, for those that don't know, this is the first one with actual scores and actual play at each level. It goes from low A, down east, uh, the Down East Wood Ducks, to high A, Hickory Crawdads. Then we go to double A, which we know about the Frisco Rough Riders, all the way up to triple A, which is the Round Rock Express, where Jeff and I will go. And they're also the sponsor of our guest segment. So let's go down to Down East. Jeff, Down East is 4-1 and one getting started. Who do we need to talk about down there? Well, they they just lost their first game last night, so they're they're playing real well. They're doing they're doing a lot um, of good of good stuff. Uh, I, I've been a fan for a while of of, of Glider Figure. I always forget yeah. his name. Fig, figure Figure Eo Figure Eo Figure Eo Figure Eo. Woo! Finally got it. Um, <laughs> this is a, he's he's repeating there this year. He's got a lot of power. You know, I guess third base is kind of in the news with. Uh, uh, what's going on at the at the big league level? But um, he's uh, he's 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 a guy to watch. You know, he's 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 young still. He's got a lot of pop. I think he could move quick too. I think he's got a chance to to get to um, maybe Frisco to Hickory uh, this year. Um, and then uh, pitching wise, uh, again, a bunch of young guys or, or, or guys who were in the draft last year. Um, always good to shout out to the local guys. Uh, Paul Bonzogni, who's from uh, Grapevine, he went to uh, South Lake Carroll High. Uh, he was drafted last year out of college, so uh, he pitched last night. He's doing good. Uh, our our good friend uh, Luke Luke uh, Savage is down yep. there from TCU. So uh, keep an eye on those guys because uh, the the guys who are college players drafted last year have a chance to move pretty quick. And doesn't matter whether they're a starter or not. Right now, these guys are only getting an inning or two. They're not going to go out and throw six or seven. Yeah, right, exactly, especially the young, young guys. Okay, then we go up to Hickory. This is the only team in the system right now who has started off slow. Jeff, they can't score any runs. They're one and four. Yeah, and they, the, the, one, the one win was last night, and they won one to nothing. They, in the 10th inning, and it was with the ghost runner. <laughs> yeah, they're unable to score. Uh, Anthony Gutierrez is there. Uh, Cam Colley is there. Walcott. A lot of a lot of our a lot of our good friends are there, and um, it's just it's not working out for them uh, at at the plate right now. They're you know good good pitching staff with Brock Porter, who was a little ragged right. his first time out, uh, but uh, you know Aiden Curry pitched real well his first time out. So um, that, they'll, they'll get it turned around. They'll get it turned around. They're gonna they're gonna have some college hitters uh, from last year's draft, like Quincy Scott, the big. Big. Uh, he was an outfielder in college. He's playing first base now. Big, big, impressive looking guy. Uh, Morrow Bell. When he gets back into the swing of things, he'll be fine too. So, um, I anticipate that uh, <laughs> that that things are going to change there down east. They have to. They can't get much worse. Offensive. Yeah, exactly. And and I've I've said that all along. And 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 you got to remember this too. They're starting pitching. They're going to face new pitchers every couple of innings. It's very. Obvious, some of these guys probably aren't facing the same pitcher by the time it comes back around to their turn to bat again. I mean, you know how it works in the big leagues. You you see a starter, you, they, they, they all talk about it. Three times through the rotation, when you see a guy more than once, you start to figure out what he throws, and you learn something each at bat. Well, these guys are facing guys one time in the lineup going up, and I don't care what anyone says, what college you went to or anything. These are some talented players at the high A level. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. let's go up to Frisco. Frisco started their week this week. They're now at home for the weekend. Uh, four and one at Frisco. Who we got to talk about there? Well, you know, again, this is a this is a team that knows how to pitch, and and you know, our, our buddy Ryan Garcia started the home opener. Um, Dane Acker started the season opener and pitched really well. Uh, I, again, I, I think Acker is a guy that that's just right there with with. Owen White and Jack Leiter. I, I just think he's really, really good. Um, I would not be at all surprised if he's in Triple A soon. Uh, he, he, you know, he pitched last year in Frisco. <clears throat> was limited by the shoulder, a shoulder deal early in the season. He had knee surgery in the off season. He's healthy, really, for the first time since he's been <clears throat> with the Rangers. So um, he's a guy. He's definitely a guy to watch. Um, and another guy to watch. <clears throat> and I'm going to mess up his name, but it's Anthony. Who Opie Tuiana Tona, who is the yeah. kid with the super long last name? He's Hawaiian, obviously. He played uh, football, didn't he? He's, he had a good fall league. He's a closer, and uh, he's got good stuff. A lot of people thought he might go in the Rule Five draft after he got a, got some exposure in the in the uh, 
the fall league. So I wouldn't be surprised if he is also a, a quick mover to the next level. And you know, don't don't discount him as a possible guy for for the major leagues if if that if it comes to that. I mean, he he has a chance to do uh, some good stuff. So I I I think he's a good one. Grant Wolfram's a good one down there. He was in big league camp. So uh, hitters, yeah, you know. The, the, Ortiz Abby hit. Ortiz hit his, his first uh, home run Sunday, his first double home run Sunday. Uh, he he's good. Uh, obviously, he's he's a, a real good prospect. They have a lot of veteran guys like Kellen Strom, uh, Liam yeah. Hicks, who won the the fall league batting titles there. The catcher who was in big league camp, uh, Giselle Cepeda, who's a, a Cuban signee. He's in double A. He uh, he won the game last night by by taking a, a ball off his leg with the bases loaded. So. Um, you know, they're they're they're. It's not like the star-studded team that it was last year. You know, when sure. it had had everybody good. Uh, now it's it's more of a, a a pitch a pitch first team. So well, the uh, star-studded team is at Triple A, well, right. or the big leagues. Right. Uh, most of the higher prospects, and this is good for this organization. <laughs> they're finally moving up that ladder, and uh, we go to Triple A. Triple A is seven and four right now. They have been playing since the day after opening day for the Rangers. Uh, a couple of the players that started out with them are no longer with them. They are <laughs> yeah. sitting in the major league dugout. Yeah. So let's talk about them. Well, yeah, we talked about Davis early on and why he's on the roster because Justin Foskey got got hurt. Um, you know, I that it, it's great. You know, it shows the depth that the Rangers have in the system. I, I, Wenzel is starting today's game. Um, we'll, we'll see how he does, but um, you know, they're they're trying to find somebody who is suitable to replace or help replace Josh Young. And uh, like, like I'd said, I, I thought Davis had a chance to, to be initially called up instead of, instead of Foscu, just because he's so good defensively and he hit 30 home runs last year. And, you know, he was yep. tied to the Pacific coast league lead. So uh, good stuff there. Look, Sam Huff is having, is off to a really good start. Yeah. Um, in, 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 in addition to Dustin and, and, and uh, yeah, Davis Dustin. is off to a good start. So, um, and and then you know Owen White's going to pitch tonight, which means Leiter is going to go tomorrow. Tim Brennan's a guy, you know, who, who kind of he kind of got derailed. He got hit by a line drive a couple years ago and broke his arm. Um, I tell you, a lot of guys in the organization like Tim Brennan, so keep an eye on him. He pitched well uh, in in the uh, in the in the second game of the doubleheader uh, yesterday. Um, don't don't uh, don't lose sight of that guy. I've seen him a couple of times. In fact, I always talk about the trip I took uh, to West Virginia and saw Hickory play that year when Huff was on Hickory and all of that, and they had the Toast Man, of course, my Toast Man story. Tim Brennan was the starter that night. Yeah. Did well. I just remember he did well. That's when I discovered Ryan Doro and became a fan of Ryan Doro. I've watched Brennan there. I've seen him pitch at Frisco also. Yeah, that's a guy he's kind of flying in. under. He was kind of like a Zach Kent. He's kind of flying that level below these guys that everybody knows. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's he's an arm to watch. He keeps progressing, moving up, and he's he's yeah. doing okay. Yeah, yeah. Keep keep his name in mind. Yep, keep his name in mind, guys. Anybody else? I mean, it's kind of a short one this week. Yeah, you know, um, I just think that uh, with with Dustin, we cover we covered a lot of minor league stuff. So sure. I think I think the bus leagues have been thoroughly covered. And uh, just a reminder, uh, Rangers today. Not just the podcast. The website covers the minor leagues, too. Sure. Go check it out. RangersToday.com, five ninety nine dollars a month, $60 for the year. And if you send an email to Jeff Wilson, to Jeff at RangersToday.com, Jeff at RangersToday.com, and say, hey, I watched your podcast. I want a subscription. I'll give you one for 48 bucks, But you got to email me. All right? And then we'll get We've you. We've already talked about this earlier. $48 for email. the year. All right? What about so, if they email me? Yeah, you can email John too. That's fine. okay. J M get a hold of one of twelve. J M more or or DM me and DM tell me you listen Twitter. to the podcast. Yeah. That's right. This Twitter address is right there. Shoot him a DM. I mean, I guess I I guess my messages are open for all the ladies. So yeah. go ahead and send me one. Maybe I can get a subscription <laughs> out of it too. But okay, uh, let's let's uh, let's keep growing this thing. You know, I just uh, uh, did did a did it looks it's it's looking good, but we don't want to stop now. We want to keep growing. So. Absolutely. Hey, guys, this has been another good one. Baseball is back all the way through the system. Um, It's so fun to do down in the bus leagues again and really have something to talk about. What a great show. 
Thanks to Dustin Harris for joining us. For Jeff Wilson, I'm John Moore. Guys, until next time, we will see you at the yard.